Uh, good evening. My name is Joe Cliff. Um, Richard named this, uh, when he sent it around, he called it Riders of the Lost Ark, which is actually Jeff Tittle of the Sierra Club, who's great on the one-liners, what he called the, uh, um, the terminal under uh, Macy's basement. But uh, what I want to talk about tonight, I'll first talk about what, what happened with the project and then talk, go through a virtual tour of what we propose doing. And we is a regional rail working group, which is New Jersey Association of Railroad Passengers, uh, Empire State Passengers Association, Lackawanna Coalition, and NARC, the National Association of Railroad Passengers, is also involved, somewhat unwillingly, because they have always been a rooter for getting money. And here, people were saying, don't take this money, do something different. They had a tough time with that. Um, everybody probably knows this. This is. You guys are up here, you're off the map. You're always off the map, right? No, sorry. Um, but you can see the system here. Uh, down here is Newark. Here's Penn Station. The Amtrak trains go through. They go up across the Hellgate to Connecticut. Um, the Empire Line comes from Albany down into Penn Station. Over the last 30 years, they've put all the inner city transportation, passenger transportation, into Penn Station. And over here, you've got Grand Central which is actually where most of the office space is walkable from. And it's not hooked up to anything else. So when ARC started access to the region's core, there were three main goals. One was more train capacity under the Hudson River. Um, and that's not saying where it goes, but just more trains under the river. The second, uh, east side access, and I just pointed out that uh, this is not connected to anything. The idea for a very long time was to figure out how to get everybody in New Jersey access to Grand Central with a track connection. So the second issue was east side access. The third issue was northeast core redundancy. Right now, on the weekends, they shut down one tunnel to work on it. And yes, the tunnels were built in 1910, but they've been renewed over time. Uh, they actually have the most modern signaling system in the region. Um, but they need work, and so on the weekends, they have one tunnel that runs 30 minutes east and 30 minutes west. They call it their 30-30 plan. But they don't have a third tunnel um, to allow them to take a tunnel out of service and continue two-way service. If something happens during the week uh, and a, a train fails somewhere, breaks down, they have wire down or something, they're back to a single tunnel. So one of the other goals of ARC was to get more tunnels to simply have more redundancy and flexibility. If you have those things, then you can run tighter schedules or reliable service. Um, so the plan originally, up until 2003, was um, come from Newark, come across the Hudson River, come into the lower side of Penn Station, and then go out through a breakout that the Pennsylvania Railroad designed in their 1910 plan. They always had thoughts of having a third set of tunnels go east. Now, in 1910, the uh, uh, New York Central System and the Pennsylvania Railroad were bitter enemies. Um, I mean, they were major enemies. And what you're talking about doing here, they're turned over in their graves because you're taking the Pennsylvania Railroad's breakout to the east, and when they built Grand Central, the lower level was always designed, and you can actually go see the columns taper down to bring uh, the center eight tracks on the lower level south, they thought they might want to extend downtown. So what uh, the plan was, was to connect these two stations with something that was actually designed 100 years ago. Um, not to connect the two, but to do other things. Um, and this was the toughest part of that. This was, a, this was evaluated in the 2003 Major Investment Study Report. Uh, the only thing we've ever seen is a 31-page summary. In fact, at the New Jersey Transit Board meeting this morning, one of the guys from New Jersey ARP said, now that the project's dead, why don't you give us the 1,400, 1,500 page set of reports that back up this 31 page report in detail? Uh, they've never released that to the public. But this is the Park Avenue viaduct. You're looking, looking south to Grand Central. And the issue was how you managed to handle four subway trains, four subway tracks on the Lexington line. And you think about it, it's the Lexington line until it gets to Grand Central, then it kicks over and it's under Park Avenue. So they figured out a way to shift tracks around south of the, the Lexington Avenue station 
to allow the art tunnels to come in under Park Avenue and break into Grand Central. To so, the lower level. Of to the lower level, that's wow. correct. Um, the level that everybody complains, I, I, I've sat through a couple of meetings where the worst thing in the world for some New Jersey or Connecticut commuters is to have their train continually go in on the lower level. <laughs> and they argue that the, the New Haven line is getting short shrift, the, the Harlem line is getting more upper level services, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but this was studied and found to be feasible. Um, so up until 2003, they had a plan that would provide the, the capacity, east side access, redundancy, but 2003 report comes out and says, well, there's not enough capacity, we don't want to do it. What actually happened, we think, is that uh, Pataki was governor of New York, and they started thinking, well, we're really not that interested in New Jersey getting access. Metro North said, you can't come into our station. We need all 46 tracks, the largest station in the world, no inner city trains anymore. Uh, and New Jersey Transit in 2003 said, we're going to go it alone. Um, George Warrington had come from Amtrak, and he said, well, if we can't work with somebody else, we're going to do it ourselves. Instead of trying harder to, to have a, a partnership, they went on their own. Um, Why did Pataki not want it? You just felt there was competition well, people coming in and getting jobs. Do you remember that, that iconic picture of Mayor Koch boarding up the Hudson, the, uh, um, what's the down, not the Lincoln Tunnel, the, uh, the South Auto Tunnel in the Holland, Holland Tunnel. Tunnel. He was boarding up the Holland Tunnel to keep the jobs from going to New Jersey. Okay, so There's always, and we call it the Hudson Ocean. It's a river, but sometimes it feels like it's an ocean. Um, yeah. So, in 2007, the ARC project came up with a plan, their draft environmental impact statement, that came from New Jersey, came under the river, here's the existing line, this is the new line. It came in, and it had one branch that went into Penn Station, and another branch that went to a terminal just north of Penn Station under 34th Street. Now strategically, you're not going to a new location. You're going to the, basically a block north of the existing location. Um, so there's no great advantage in terms of delivering people um, to the east side at all. But at least they still had a connection to Penn. At that time, we were still saying you need to do alternative G, which I just showed you. Um, during 2007, and in the, in the uh, report in 2008, the supplemental DEIS, they killed the connection to Penn Station. And at this point, all they had was a terminal, seven terminal arrow, London 34th Street. Um, four tracks over, uh, originally it was four tracks over four tracks, it was reduced to three over three, but um, did not go anywhere. And the result of that, Amtrak found out the same way we did. They found out in public that they had no more access to art. If you look at this plan, if the regular tunnels had had a problem, or say on the weekends when you were working on one of them, you could have brought trains in through the art tunnels and used this branch to go into Penn Station. So Amtrak, until they killed that leg, had redundancy, had the, the ability to have one of their tunnels shut down and still have two tunnels working. But in this plan, they lost it. They found out in July of 2007, the same way we did. It was announced. Um, and there was there's some really interesting uh, communications between Amtrak and New Jersey Transit that, from a corporate perspective, is really heavy-duty stuff. They were very upset. Uh, they felt they'd really been, they were screwed. Uh, and the side 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 side. Side. Excuse me? Yeah. They were side -swiped. Yeah. And we believe, they said the reason they, they cut the connection was because they dropped the uh, cap, the deep cavern station on 34th Street, and it would be hard to get up into Penn Station and down uh, into the 34th Street. The real reason we think they did it, and Amtrak put it in writing, is they had to save money. They said they cut the connection. The project actually went up in price in 2008, despite the fact that they killed this connection. 